Hey y'all, welcome to my channel, Plant Based Storm, and welcome back to another video. My name is Stormy, and this is a place where I like to share all things plant-based, whether that be recipes or lifestyle tips that relate to being plant-based or how a plant-based diet has helped me lose a lot of weight and regain a lot of health. Um, this is the place where I like to do it at, so welcome. Today I want to talk about a subject that's pretty controversial within the plant-based world and outside of the plant-based world, but before we do that, disclaimer, I am not a medical professional or a registered dietitian, and you should always seek the advice of a medical professional before making a major change to your diet. Um, this is just my personal um, decision, choice, and preference that I want to share with you today and how it has helped me. So what we're gonna be talking about today is how I made the decision to go oil-free and why. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how to make swaps to lead an oil-free lifestyle if that is something that you are interested in. So does oil-free mean fat-free? No, it totally does not mean fat-free. Oil-free means that I simply avoid oils, but I eat fats that are still intact in the way that nature packaged them. So for example, instead of avocado oil or olive oil, I would eat the actual whole avocado or the olive rather than the oil. Of course, these foods still have fat in it just like the oil does but it's also wrapped up in a bunch of nutrition because the food is left whole and intact so you still have your nutrients and your fiber instead of empty calories a little comparison that i would like to think about oil is it can be compared to something like the juice from fruit or the sugar from carbs it's just a fraction of the food that it used to be so it is just the fat from the whole food. So why no oil? The simple short answer is that for this past almost year, in November will be a year since I went whole food plant-based, my goal has been to simply eat more whole plant foods. And that's the simple short answer. Now the long answer and then the how. Oil is not a whole food. And my goal for this lifestyle has been for health, but my journey also includes weight loss. Oil is approximately 4,000 calories per pound. Compared to all other foods, it is the most calorie dense food on the planet. Just a quick look at the calorie density weight loss chart. Um, you can see that vegetables that are non-starchy are approximately 100 calories per pound. Fruit is about 300 calories per pound. Your more starchy things uh, are vegetables or tubers, like potatoes, corn, squash, and oats, those type of things are around 400 calories per pound. And the whole grains, rice and pasta, around 500. Beans and legumes, 600 calories per pound. And you typically want to eat more of the things that are 600 calories per pound and less and start to pollute or be very selective about the things that are more than 600 calories. This is the main driving force behind why I have chosen to be oil free. Of course, I believe we can agree that no one sits down and eats a whole pound of oil. I mean, gross, right? Like who would do that? Nobody that I know, I know I certainly couldn't or wouldn't. Calorie density is just another way of seeing the breakdown of food and where we should be focused at. And just because we're looking at calories doesn't mean that we can't have to count calories. For a demonstration and a more in-depth explanation of why calorie density works, I'm gonna link my video here, Calorie Density Explained, and it is a great visual of why and how calorie density works if it's something that you want a more in-depth explanation about. So I wanted to read this to you real quick by Jeff Novick on Forks Over Knives, and I'm gonna leave the link for this article in the description box below so that you can read the whole article for yourself if you want. But it was really great the way that he worded this, and he is a wealth of knowledge. Research has shown that people can eat freely of the foods that are 300 calories per pound or less and not gain weight. 
people can consume relatively large portions of foods that are between 300 and 800 calories per pound and still lose or maintain their weight depending on their individual activity levels and metabolism. The intake of foods with a calorie density of 800 to 1800 should be limited as these can contribute to weight gain and interfere with efforts to lose weight. Additionally, the intake of foods over 1800 calories per pound should be extremely limited as these foods can very easily contribute to weight gain and obesity and greatly interfere with the efforts to lose weight. To me, that's such a liberating feeling knowing that I can manage my weight and health with just a few guiding principles instead of doing something like counting macros, which I have done in the past, counting points, which I have done in the past, um, just adding up calories. It is so time consuming and it really gets to where it's overwhelming for me personally. I'm not knocking anybody. If that's the way that you are able to manage your health and your weight, then that is perfectly fine for you. But for me, I would much rather follow just a few guiding principles and not have to count calories and be able to eat things until I am com comfortably full and not ever go hungry like I have before whenever I was counting calories and just staying inside of a certain caloric box. I also want to encourage you to research this subject for yourself and make the decision based upon the information that you come across. There is a ton of information out there supporting why you would want to eat a oil-free diet. I'm going to add another link below below and it's Dr. Greger talking about um, how oil can clog up your arteries and it's a great video and he articulates it way better than I could ever hope to do and there's other doctors out there like Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Campbell, Dr. Barnard, um, so many that I can't name them all in one sitting off the top of my head but there is just tons and tons of information out there. So I encourage you to do your own research and make your own decision. And also, like if I go out to eat or something like that, I don't always restrict myself to being oil-free. It's not practical for me. I want this to be a lifestyle that I can hold on to for quite a long time. And if I'm always putting myself into a bracket where I can't do, then it makes it a lot more difficult to be a lifestyle. So, if I go out to eat and I have some plant-based pizza and it's got a little bit of oil on it, I don't stress about it at all. That's my personal choice. You can do whatever it is that you feel like you need to do, whether that's being oil-free and never having oil again or being oil-free and allowing yourself to do some things like that. Um, I do this so that I can enjoy things with my family because 95% or greater, I am oil-free at home and we rarely, rarely go out to eat. So that's something that I'm okay with doing. Without further ado, after we got the why out of the way, let's talk about the how. When I saute veggies, I normally cook them in a dry non-stick skillet or I'll use a little bit of water or broth to help keep them from sticking. So whenever I do things like mushrooms or something that has their own water that they will eventually release, mushrooms will do something like that, then you, could just put it on like a medium heat, put the mushrooms in the pan, and then you can put a lid on and let them start sweating, and then they're gonna release a lot of water, and then you can just cook it in its own water and let that cook until they're tender and soft, and it has um, cooked the water off, and they're perfect and good to go. Sometimes whenever you cook things like onions and garlic, onions will release a little bit of their own water, but not a whole lot, and they can have a tendency to stick. So I would add in a little bit of water or vegetables broth because the vegetable broth adds in some extra flavor and allow that to cook until it's tender and add in just little bits at a time um, as much as needed until the vegetable is tender. You can do that not with just garlic, onions, mushrooms, but you can do it with any vegetable that you come across. I have yet to have a hard time to water saute or dry saute any vegetables that I have cooked. 
might be a little bit different than what you're used to whenever you're cooking with oil but just like anything new if you give it a little bit of time you'll have it down in no time and it'll be second nature roasting without oil i usually put it on a non-stick surface whether that's my seal pat mat or some parchment paper i'll put it into the oven um, and i usually coat it and season it up i will add in a little bit of vinegar or lemon or lime whatever it is i'm cooking and allow that to kind of keep it moist and help it crisp on up um, and then i will also stir it several times throughout cooking so that it gets cooked and roasted on all different sides without sticking and that's pretty straightforward and easy to do as long as you use a non-stick surface and then for baking most of the time i just either omit the oil if i feel like it's not going to be something that you would miss the oil in or I will use applesauce in place of the oil. Like my spinach wraps, I will add in applesauce and I will use it in other baking like um, banana bread, cakes, muffins, things like that where it's a little bit more dense and it's usually a one to one replacement. So if it calls for a quarter cup of oil, you would add in a quarter cup of applesauce. Now you might wanna look it up for various things like cookies and brownies because sometimes that can be a little bit trickier but there is information out there that tells you how to do the exchange because I could go through every single type of baked good but that would take a really long time. A pro tip for using the applesauce is to make sure not to use a sweetened applesauce because that could alter the flavor of your recipe and that's obviously not what we're going for. So what are your thoughts on going oil free? Are you oil free or are you not? If you are oil free, what are some of your favorite swaps? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks so much for watching.